Six months ago, the Atlantic Council and Thompson Reuters uh, released uh, our report, The Danger of Divergence, Transatlantic Cooperation on Financial Reform, which uh, sought to define the essential areas for transatlantic cooperation on these very challenging issues. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, its author, uh, you'll also be hearing from today, uh, Doug Elliott, um, uh, from the Brookings Institution, and who also has had a very serious <coughs> career. But since the time of the release of the report, we had a rollout of the report here on Capitol Hill, in fact, with Senator Warner, and also our CEO, Herman Thompson Reuters, and also we had in Brussels a rollout. We were very pleased that the <coughs> co-chair, Sharon Bowles, Chair of the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee spearheaded that discussion. So we have strived from starting last year, at the time of the uh, discussion over Dodd-Frank, and then ultimately the release of the legislation, to try to step back and to have a transatlantic focus, a transatlantic look at this. What are the ramifications? What's happening here in the United States? What does this mean for what's happening in Europe? How are they integrated? How are they not necessarily integrated? Let me say that this has been really a rewarding effort uh, and a great partnership uh, for us at Thomson Reuters. We look very much forward to that continued relationship with the Atlantic Council as we dig deeper into these issues and work to identify solutions. So let me uh, stop there and um, uh, ask Alexi to please come up and uh, also say some opening remarks. Thanks, Thanks Paula. Hi, I'm Alexi Monserrat. I'm the director of the Global Business and Economics Program at the Atlantic Council. I want to echo Paula's thanks to Senator Warner and Ambassador Valle Almeida for, for being with us this morning and, and helping lead us off in this discussion, as well as the rest of our panelists, some of whom have traveled away as from Europe to be here with us today. Uh, and, and we're really looking forward to everything that they're going to teach us today. And to thank Paula and Kate Friedrich and Thompson Reuters, as well as their colleagues who have traveled. Um, we've been working on this issue for almost a year now, uh, and you've heard what, what Paul and I uh, is, is what we've done, and, I, and I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to keeping doing that with them and, and keep you all posted on what we're doing. Um, and again, also, really, just on our Warner staff, I, I really want to say thank you because this has been a, been a great amount of work. These things always look so simple when you sit down, but they're not too simple. <laughs> For those of you who are a little bit less familiar with the Atlantic Council, um, I, I just wanted to sort of outline, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year, we're typically associated with security and, and sort of NATO issues, but uh, as part of a global legal um, we are we are branching out into a number of different areas, including the global business and economic realms. I was rewarded at the beginning of 2009 when I started with the global financial crisis. Uh, and so that has been a large focus of what it is that we're doing sort of steady from the uh, of work that we're putting out on that. The Council's overall mission <coughs> is to renew the transatlantic relationship for 21st century global challenges. And so far, the 21st century has obliged us with a number of challenges. Uh, and our, our view is very much that it is the transatlantic relationship that may not solve all the problems, but that all global solutions will heavily involve the transatlantic community. Um, and <coughs> One of the you know most significant things we've seen so far has been the financial and economic tempest in the last several years. We're past crisis mode, I think, but the, there's a lot of very difficult work left to do. Difficult both because the subject matter is quite difficult, but also because people really have some genuine disagreements about how it is that this ought to come together. And our goal in posting this today is to provide, to provide a neutral, non-partisan space to rise above the somewhat heated rhetoric surrounding financial regulatory reform. We like to serve as an aggregator of best minds here at the Council of Rankings because it's almost a fairly formidable intellectually today. And so we're greatly looking forward to what it is that they're going to teach us about where we are on Dot Frank, how that works with the Europeans, some of the challenges still facing the European community, and um, and come up with a really rewarding set of information about how we're going to go forward. Just a brief reminder to everybody that Today's session is on the record, uh, and we'll be posting the audio of the event and possibly video um, later on, uh, later tomorrow. Uh, we 
we will have some time for questions and answers with the audience. We don't have a microphone for you, but so if you could just uh, stand up and then do please remember to identify yourself and ask your questions. So there's some And uh, with that, I'll turn it back. All of you will be here. Hopefully, this is very very Okay, well, great. Well, Ambassador, let me ask you to come on up. I said I thought we would uh, maximize a little bit on time, especially with introductory remarks. Um, I uh, actually, I will take uh, the time just to put this discussion in context. And let me just reaffirm uh, uh, a little bit about procedure. What I wanted to do is, first I'm going to put this, this discussion in context of where we are. Secondly, is to uh, uh, provide or go back and forth with both Senator Younger and with Ambassador Alameda uh, to pose questions to them. And after I get through a number of questions, I, I will look out to the audience. So, um, and I'll flag it maybe during one of the questions. So we really move along and they get a lot of questions that they're able to take on in this time frame. Let me put this uh, uh, discussion in context. We know that the uh, Dodd and Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, Senator, I, I just was starting with some opening comments, and as we said, that's my thing I talked to you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And then I'm going to introduce you. I'm putting first this discussion in context. I was saying that the Dodd Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act is, we know, the most comprehensive package of financial regulatory reform since the Great Depression. Ten months after its passage, the debate over how to govern financial markets continues. Uh, there are hundreds of rulemakings, ongoing debates among regulators on interpretation of the law, and also a new Republican House majority now in office. And the complexity of rulemaking and challenges of implementation are what I think you could say above the fold in every major newspaper in the country. Now to illustrate the point, tomorrow, as I understand it, in this very room, a hearing is scheduled on oversight of Dodd-Frank implementation, and in fact will feature top regulators from Treasury, the Fed, the SEC, CFTC, OCC, and the FDIC. Industry in particular right now is grasping at how to make sense of uh, the new rules, all these new rules, and also how to bring their businesses into compliance with the uh, new Dodd-Frank Act requirements. If I may personalize in, in a little bit, uh, we at Thomson Reuters, in fact, um, were compelled to create in our own industry a dedicated governance, risk, and compliance business to help our customers. And you'll be hearing from some of our executives uh, uh, later this morning. Basically, how to help our customers help uh, uh, understand and implement the new rules. Now, why is that? Because there are questions that abound with regard to uh, the volume, the complexity, maybe some of the uncertainties of the ramifications of the rules and what impact it will have. So, we know that much remains to be done on this and it will have a significant impact on the way business is operating. Now, let me go on the other side of the pond. The European Commission has made significant progress through its consultation paper, paper on Method 2, which was published last December. Hundreds of public comments were accepted until February. Now, the Method review has been compared to that of the Dodd-Frank Act, although it might not be seen exactly in the same scale and scope, but with proposed revisions on the need for increased transparency, and also with a very special focus on high-frequency trading, regulation of broker dark pools, and the establishment of the European Securities and Market Authority that will, uh, uh, will create detailed market structure rules, to name just a few. The final draft proposal was scheduled for release in late spring, and now is supposed to be out this summer. So that's, that's the backdrop of uh, what we are addressing this morning. 